one of the biggest problems I find with most comedians when they sit down to write is they're just trying to sit down to be funny. And you can see the dilemma there. Oh, my God, I got to be funny. And it's just this big amorphous goo of, oh, my God, I got to be funny. There's too much. There's too much information hitting your brain. So it paralyzes you. So you stare at a blank page all, all day. So what you should do is pick something and decide to write on it. It's like put down something and then use technique to make it funny. So how do you do that? We're going to focus on that today. We're going to try to do it just by picking a word. Now, tomorrow, according to the weather report, showed up in my phone, said it's going to rain. So I went, okay, let's, like, like, let's make that the subject matter, rain. So we'll start with the word rain. One of the things to understand is when we sit down to write jokes, when we sit down to write something, a lot of us wait for this inspiration to happen. Oh my God, this inspiration. Uh, I'm not getting, I'm not inspired. I haven't gotten any inspiration. Stop waiting for inspiration. Pick a word, pick a subject, pick a topic and write it down on the page and start writing on it. Now, quick side note, most people don't know this. Even most comedians don't know this. There is a vast array of different ways to create inspiration to write anytime you want. Most people have three or four. I've got 24, 24. Actually, I've got 66 that I use, but 24 on the major on the major picture here, as you can see, these are different. Like if I'm sitting there, I have nothing to write on. I can choose any one of these uh, multiple inspirations, my comedy material generator, and use this to start making an approach and come up with jokes. So any given day, I sit down, even when I don't feel funny, I can choose one of these techniques, apply the system and create jokes. By the way, I'll be teaching this on my weekend workshop, two day workshop that I'm teaching in Vegas, October 14th and 15th. And that's the, that's the one coming up now. Uh, I have, I do several of these a year. Check my website. That's in the description to go to more. These are intense six hours per day, intense writing workshops where you get all the goods, man. And it's a lot of fun. Just that's a side note. Let's get back to writing with, with the list on rain. So I take this one word, rain. Rain is relative to what's happening right now because I saw it in a uh, forecast. So I said, I'm going to write this down, rain. And I was like, the first thing I do is like rain. What else could this be? Uh, what's related to it? Rain, w w w there could be a stripper named Rain, but let's not even start with that yet. That came later. In this particular thing, I was like associations dealing with Rain. I look for people, places, things, words, phrases, cliches, events, celebrities, and branding. And I make a list. Making the list is where the inspiration comes from. Without the list, a lot of times you're searching. You can only keep track of two to three ideas at the same time in your mind. So you're just going to lose a lot of information. When you put it on the page, now you have control of it because you could always come back and reference it. Here's the beauty of the list. See, this list I did manually. I put rain, flash flooding, 40 days, 40 nights, epic flood, hurricane, tropical storm. You can, you can read it faster than I can say it. And there's all these ideas. Sometimes saying them out loud can give you more so downpour, 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 downpour. So you have down, you have poor. Maybe that just saying it out loud could be could give you some ideas as well. So low pressure system, isolated showers, rainstorm, dark clouds, condensation, precipitation. But you can see all of these associations, raining cats and dogs, rain, rain, go away, wet weather, uh, under the weather, I think is something I also came up with down here, under the weather, um, when you're feeling sick under the weather is right here. So um, it never rains in Southern California, a calm before the storm, stormy, um, Katrina, hurricane, cat three, cat four, uh, plu a pluviophile. Now I found this to be funny, uh, an idea because pluviophile came to me. It's a lover of rain. Um, that was like looking it up. I didn't know that before. Here's what's cool, right? So I did this list manually. And it took me about 25, 30 minutes. But what if we were able to take it and have ChatGPT do a list for us? Over here, I had ChatGPT do a list of dealing with rain. And all I did was put, put, a, put a search into ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT is an excellent device. Watch how quickly. What's, let's do it again. Let's take what they uh, find me, 50 associations. Uh, and we just, if you plugged it in, let's see how quickly it comes up with this. So we're going to drop that in there right now. Write me now that the, the prompt you give chat GPT is important 
right? Write me 50 associations related to the word rain. Use words, phrases, cliches, people, celebrities, terms, etc. cetera. Um, and so I asked for 50 because the more you have, the more fodder you have, the more research you have, the more inspiration comes from that research. Remember, inspiration doesn't just happen. It comes from taking action, right? There's no reason to get stuck. There's no reason for writer's block. Just sit down, take some action. Ideas start coming to you. So let's try this again and see what ChatGPT does. Look how quickly it comes up with this list, you know, and it's coming up with new stuff that wasn't in that first lift. Rihanna's umbrella, monsoon season, cloudburst, acid rain, a cloudburst. And you're dealing with a stripper, cloudburst could be the name of, you know, you, it could be a metaphor for an orgasm. So you could see that there's all possibilities. Wet socks, do, water spout, rainy day fund, rain, rain, go away, come again another day, come again another day, dealing with a stripper, stripper of sex, all right? Come again another day. Uh, muddy puddles, hydrate, rain barrel, meteorologist, water waterlog, crying in the rain, El Nino, drip, drip, uh, pitter patter of raindrops, raindrop patterns, a uh, little rain never hurt anyone, Seattle known for rain, rain check. So there's a lot of there. Purple rain, that's a new one. Even if we go to the previous list, it didn't have purple rain on this list. It just came up with new ones. So each time you come in with some new ones, it'll, it, it could give you some more uh, fodder, more research, more research, create more inspiration. So now let's go over raincoat. Raincoat is a metaphor for rubber or condom. So you could say if, you know, depending on how much your audience knows, are they hip enough to pick up on that uh, reference? All right. April showers bring May flowers. Those are her other, those are the other two strippers at the club. Um, so anyway, let's go back to, let's go back to the list. So you see this list is here. You can utilize this list. I do it and I put two windows together. Now I could basically use both ideas and scroll through both to come up with, you know, just to brainstorm with what's available on those lists. So out of that list, now we have some po a lot of different possibilities. We start with the ones that are just related to, say, L.A. That's where I live. So I tie it in. So target and angle, uh, two things that are very important in a, in a joke. You have a target. That's your topic. You have an angle. That's the, what you feel about it. That's the, the angle you're taking. What am I trying to say with this joke? That's the angle. So um, let's look at Let's just scroll through. You could see we came up with a couple of ideas just off the list we were reading off of, right? Now, and I didn't even write those down. Thank goodness this is uh, recorded. Now I can get those, uh, those jokes later. But in this case, we have 22 jokes that are written from the list. 22. This is why the listing is so important. Now, out of these jokes, these 22 jokes, I might decide that six are good enough to make the show. 10 might be good enough to make the show, but every one of these is going to get some sort of chuckle, right? The level of the laughter depends on your audience, but every one of these contains some sort of structures, some sort of like coincidence, some sort of surprise or twist that is going to get the audience to at least go, huh. So let's take a look. When, you, when they say it rains, it pours in LA, they say when it rains, it washes away the urine. That's a compare and contrast joke. Structurally, that'll get some sort of a chuckle. Uh, in LA, there's a, if there's a light rain, it's easy for drivers to lose control. When there's a heavy rain, it's easy for sidewalks to lose their smell of urine. And it's like, I would maybe even change that to pee, right? So in LA, there's a light rain, it's easy for drivers to lose control. When there's heavy rain, it's easy for sidewalks to lose the smell of pee. Um, that could pay off a little bit, get a little laugh. When there's rain in LA, there's kind of a renewal. The hills get greener and the homeless get cleaner. So because there is, it's a win-win. So because there is an alliteration or rhyme, it amps up the coincidence. And you probably know by now that coincidence is one of the nine major psychological laughter triggers uh, from my book, Breaking Comedy's DNA. And if you want the book, there's a link to it in the description. Uh, they say when it rains, it pours unless you sell patio furniture. Then when it rains, you're poor. Uh, our game was canceled because it was raining cats and dogs. That's the bad news. The good news is they were all rescues. So that's a way to tell that joke. Uh, I dated a stripper named Rain. Now, here's where the joke opens up to all these other possibilities because we're adding a second idea. The original definition of a joke is two dissimilar ideas converging two dissimilar ideas converging. So when you have that, the stripper idea, my mother used to say, it's going to rain. Don't forget to wear your rubbers. Uh, I did a stripper named Rain. Now I know what my mom meant uh, by, it looks like rain. Don't forget to wear your rubbers. Um, I'm too broke to ever go to a strip club. Like I could never make it rain. 
damn, I could barely even make it sprinkle. Eh, so-so joke. Uh, the strip club, uh, now that inspired this next one, which was the strip club will strip you of your savings. Uh, I used to be able to make it rain. Now I can barely make rent. So using that mirrored phrase under using the uh, the term make, right? I used to be able to make it rain. rain. Now I could barely make rent. When you hit that key word again in that mirrored phrase, the audience is expecting. The brain just automatically expects it to end the same way. And when it doesn't, that's where the surprise comes in. And that's what makes that joke work. That is a trope or a structure you can use time and time again. And I want you to remember, no structure, no laughs. No matter where you put it in your story, in your rant, if there's no structure, there's no joke. Uh, So just make sure that you have structure. That's where the payoffs come from. I'm too gro- broke to ever go to the. Uh, let's see. Uh, I started to date a stripper named Rame. I'm a, I'm a little confused. I don't. If we have sex, do I have to use a condom or an umbrella? I know that's kind of stupid, right? If we have sex, one of the best things my mother taught me was save your money for a rainy day. Great advice. Hookers are expensive. I dated a stripper named Rain. She used to let me snort coke right off her ass. Every date was like a weather report. Tonight, expect rain with a chance of snow. Now, this particular joke, I came up with tonight. Expect rain with a chance of snow or as the first part. That's what I came up with first because it's a phrase used by meteorologists. That said, how can I tie this to stripper? Oh, stripper lets you coat snort coke off their ass. That's where the snow comes from. And I, that's how I built that joke. The phrase tonight, expect rain with a chance of snow came first. So just so sometimes you write jokes backwards that way. Um, unless she's really pushed off, then there's just frozen rain and that could be really dangerous. Um, uh, that's the thing about dating a stripper named Rain. You never have, you know, ne- you never have to guess whether or not you're going to have sex. You just check the Doppler radar, 70% chance, wear your rubbers. So there's a, there's a possible joke right there. I used to date a Japanese girl. She was adorable. In English, she didn't use the plural form of words. She'd be like, oh, there's a lot of raindrop on the window. Oh, there's a lot of raindrop on the windshield. That was one of, I remember her saying that when we were driving. I was that's so adorable. And she'd be like, oh, when it rained, it pour, right? It's a, it was cute until she tried to sext me. One time she wrote, I want you to fuck my brain out. I was like, no, I can't. Uh, she's thinking it's sexy. I'm thinking the Zabruder film, you know? So you see that where that particular uh, joke can go. And that was all inspired by this rain thing. Uh, I'm not saying that Trump is a Nazi sympathizer. Let's just say that there's been plenty of rain at the campaign rallies recently. Uh, I dated a stripper named Rain. My friend was like, how's the sex, man? I said, biblical. He's like, what do you mean? I said, 40 days, 40 nights. I was getting weather alerts on my phone for flash flooding. Her name should have been called Hurricane with the way she blew me. You see, that's a little blue, right? Adult content, but it still ties in. So you see the coincidence between the juxtaposition with rain, sex, weather reports, all that stuff ties in perfectly. Um, Have you ever heard of hot rain? You have now. Um, I dated a girl named Rain. We rarely had sex, or as I like to call it, intermittent showers. So now that inspired this next joke, which has nothing to do with the stripper. Uh, Sex in my marriage is a lot like rain in Southern California. I don't get any. So that real quick analogy ties into a nice, solid joke. I don't get any is true for each and both at the same time. Sex in my marriage, I don't get any. Rain in Southern California, I don't get any. So that one phrase ties both of those ideas together. That's the analogy joke. That's the magic there. True for each and both at the same time. Uh, I dated a stripper named Rain. Anytime we had sex she was and she was on top, I just called that being under the weather. So there you go, a quick run through 22 jokes from one word, and you can see how we can get there using the listing. You could also use ChatGPT to help you generate lists. I implore you, pay close attention. Do not have ChatGPT write your jokes for you. It's a, it's, first of all, it comes up with riddles. Uh, they're usually hashtag dad jokes. And on top of that, it scrapes. Chad GPT scrapes from the internet what's already existing on the internet. If you ask it to write a joke for you, odds can be that it will come up with a joke that's already been written. You don't want to risk that. That's called plagiarism. Plagiarism can get you sued. I had a comedian do a joke. She put the little video up on uh, Instagram and 
Uh, I listened to the joke and the joke was very funny. And I DM'd her. I said, great joke. And she writes back, yeah, Chat GPT helped me write that joke. I go, yeah, that's Rita Rudner's joke. So <laughs> I said, take it down because uh, that's not good. You don't want to get the reputation of stealing jokes, do you, Carlos Mencia? Who career could end. Now, keep that in mind when you're writing. Use ChatGPT as a research device. You notice when I when I came up when I was looking for that make it joke, make it make it rain. I can't even make rent. I had ChatGPT come up with um, other ideas that from that right. I used ChatGPT to develop some make it. So here, like make it, I could come up with phrases, twenty sentences with the phrase make it, and it came up with these ideas. And it inspired, even though the one make rent wasn't there, it inspired that particular line. So does that make sense? This gives me gave me great inspiration to come up with that particular joke. Uh, so using ChatGPT to help you generate ideas is a is it's great for research, not great for writing jokes. So that's how you basically take one word and create. 22 jokes. Uh, and that's what we did was like 22 jokes in that one word experience. Uh, first of all, you find out what else could it be. You flesh out those two dissimilar ideas and you start to do your listing technique and you look for the coincidences between the two dissimilar ideas and you keep brainstorming and you do the, but you got to do that listing. The brain can only keep track of three to four ideas at once in the brain. So then you get them down on the page. You don't have to worry about keeping track of those ideas that are there on the page. Then you ask, what else could it be? And you flesh out from there and look for the coincidences. Also remember your structures. Paired phrase, mirrored phrase, uh, analogies, uh, two dissimilar ideas, um, compare and contrast, befores and afters. All of those things where there is a laugh, there is a structure. No structure, no laughs. Remember that. You know, it may sound like it's freestyling when people are up there, but they're really, they're getting laughs because there is a specific structure in place that triggers that laugh mechanism in their, in their human audience. So I hope this brought a value to your day. Get writing. We'll see you later. Bye.